Okay guys, let's get started. Today I would like to discuss dictionaries and like last time we said the different kind of collections collection each set of elements that we treat as one entity with one variable and we can work with these and that is what the collections are we see in this collection basically means like when we discuss list multiple values together in a single entity they are represented by a single variable you can check for existence of a value that whether a value exists in a collection or not like you can find using index we can add new values something of that kind modification and we discuss basically the A list and we define the list as let's say if we look at we define the list as let's say vowels we define as a list and this is what we did and we, if we say vowels zero I'll get a if I say vowels four I get u now today we'll discuss new collection type which is dictionary which is basically a very powerful way if you look at vowels we always say vowel zero or vowel one that means we need to know what is at the access location 1 or access location 2, a particular one. But it will be a lot more powerful if we can somehow associate a name to the element and access them using the name. And that is what we like to basically do. And let's say, how do you go about doing it? So, it's Dictionaries are one of the very very powerful data collection and almost anything you do you'll see people are going to use dictionaries. If you heard about database, database is a organized collection of data that can be accessed in a fast and better way. If you heard about Oracle database, MySQL database, anything that kind. So it looks like more like a database you want to look at what you call is key value pair. The same dictionaries are also implemented in other languages in Perl and PHP. Perl you might not be knowing, but PHP is what you see most a good number of web pages are developed using PHP. So there is a data sector called associative arrays, which is nothing but like a dictionary. If any of you know about Java, in Java you have a properties as a structure or you have a hash map or map. These again are implemented as dictionary. In C++, in C Sharp or .NET, they are called property back, something of that kind. So primarily, what you do is in dictionary is you assign a label to an element and store that element. And what we call is a key value pair. And so elements are accessed by using the key or a tag or a label, and not by index one, index two, index three. Now, since we are accessing by a label, that means that elements may not be ordered as you enter. Just because I entered elements in certain order does not mean I'll get access element in the same order. So, depending on index, depending on the key, I'll, we may be accessing it differently. Look like at a few examples. So, dictionary are initialized by the curly braces. Like empty list, I can dictionary, I, I can say my L is equal to square brackets this initializes the empty list but if i need to initialize dictionary i use curly braces however accessing elements are always accessed using square bracket in list within the square bracket we were basically giving the index value 0 1 2 3 but here i can simply say I created a dictionary taking example monthly tranquil. I define a dictionary called owner and say owner label. I'm giving a flat number as the label or a key saying owner of i-205 is Ram Rustagi, owner of d1001 is Asundar, owner of d306 is Prasanna Nilavar, and so on and so forth. So, I, though I have entered element in first. This is the element number one. I entered element number two, element number three. This does not mean that this order you'll be accessing them. Need not be. 
you always access them by using the specified key. If I were to say print owner, which is my dictionary now, and dictionary containing three elements, it will print in the curly braces and specify first key separated by a colon and then by a value. Next element comma, then again next key separated by a colon and the value separated by a comma then you have again next element is the key colon and then you have the value and then at the end we have curly closing braces you can of course access individual elements and most of the time you might see order of the element displayed in the same the way you entered it but it is not guaranteed cannot depend upon that you will be getting in the same order so when you do a print order is not guaranteed it could be in any order and don't count upon the order of entry of this element let's look at how do we define as we already said with the empty dictionary empty dictionary be specified with curly braces or I can insert the element itself like owner I can say my label colon values comma label colon values comma label colon values and so on and so forth I, I or I can define another one like I want to know what is days in a month I define days in a month I know January has 31 days February 28 days or you can say February 29 days depending on what you want to take that or I can say Feb leap year because one key cannot have two values one key a label has only one value so March has 31 days April 30 days so on and so forth <coughs> now what you see here I am so far I define key of a dictionary to be a string it need not be it could even be a number any number it could even be a list item or whatever data structure whatever variable support the key a label could be anything like I like to know which are the months that are 31 days I'm defining my key is 31 and value is the name of the month separated by the spaces then 30 I got four months 28 if my key is 28 and key is 29 for a given key the two values can be same but two different keys I can have same value but for a one key I cannot assign the two different values the moment I assign it a second value would be overridden and it not be maintained so let me just say give an example there So I would say days month is equal to I'm saying empty dictionary and I say days month I say in bracket 28 is equal to fab I can say days month 29 is equal to fab and I can say print days month I'll get both the value but if I were to put let's say assign month days empty dictionary then I say month or I can say month days is equal to let's say Jan 31 have 28 March 31 and let me I'll stop at one more and then we can see 30 now if you say I say print month days five. sorry to interrupt you yeah. uh, I have one doubt sure so when we have a uh, month days and we define a dictionary right yeah so if we are giving uh, there are two months which have 31 days 
so if i want to access the key value pair of uh-huh. a month which has 31 days consider i want to access jan uh-huh. then if if i give the value mm-hmm. will it come with the no, uh, no. which key will it come you first you access only with the index let's take a normal dictionary english dictionary yeah how do you search do you search by the meaning or do you search by the word by the word that's the same thing but dictionary not okay, but fine. what you see dictionary normal daily life and remember a word okay. can have whatever so a word has only it can have whole sentence but word appears only once in a dictionary a word yeah. doesn't appear twice if you notice that word never appears twice yes that for of the word the whole thing whatever paragraph could be value of the word but you cannot say if word has two meaning they put it also number one number two you can do that as a literal but it appears only okay, okay. all right yeah. yeah so if you want to find out for a value then you to search iterate over all the keys so let's say you want to know which are the words whose meaning is possible when you look at all the dictionary words search for it and then you can find out but there is no direct so uh, can no i direct. can we directly uh, can we directly access a key through the value if we know the value can we access no, a key in a no, dictionary no no then it becomes a reverse way okay yeah so no you can get all the values you can get all the keys all the keys yeah but yeah. we cannot access a... you cannot access using a value yes sir okay you can see if a value exists that could be fine but what is the key for that okay, value yes, directly not to knowledge so if we look at what i have done here now if i were to say month days fab is 29 now this value is overwritten so if i assign it what are the last values that will be overwritten that will maintain so will not create two different entries is that okay yes sir yeah now look next what the typical use is the most common example you find is let's say given a text and text i'm giving is we are here to learn python programming python is easy to learn programming language is hard whatever or i would say c++ programming language is hard and so on and so forth i want to know how many times in this sentence or in this paragraph each word has appeared so what we do is we start count as if you look at we start count as empty dictionary look at each word check and for each word that becomes a key and count becomes a value now if the word is not there we assign a count of 1 if word already there in the dictionary we we'll increment the count so what we do is for word in word split so text dot split remember when we talk about a text there is a function called split which will split by the spaces or white spaces like so text dot split would give me basically list which contains v r here each one becomes this thing in a list now i access each word in that list now i want to make sure that the that this programming here and this program i want to treat as same if the dot or comma i want to remove that this is what i'm doing remember my last index in the list is access by minus 1 and since each word is a string i'm accessing the last one is it the dot the last word is dot i'm saying remove that dot because i don't want otherwise what will happen is if i don't remove this this programming with a dot and this programming would be two different words because you're looking at a string so i want to remove that so dot. there are three dots no so we look at that i'm saying to me this programming and this programming is the same i don't want to differentiate okay okay i'm saying anywhere i don't want to count upon dots i'm looking at the word and the dot 
Hilly does not contribute to my work. So I'm trying to skip those parts. Okay. Is that fine? Yes, sir. Yeah. What yeah. I'm saying, if there's a dot at the end, remove that part. Now I'm saying okay. word in count of keys. I count is my dictionary. I'm saying, is this word exist in the keys? If it exists, that means I increment the count. I increment the count. If this does not exist, set the count to one. And finally, once I've done everything, I do a print count. It will give me a print of the count. Any questions about this understanding the program? Very simple application of using a dictionary. Anything else would have been a lot more complicated. Anush? Sir, I understood, sir. Thank you. Srizna? I understood, sir. Understood. Vedant is fine as well. So let's say I can run this program and show that to you. Let's say, let me go. This is my program. If you look at the same program, what happened? I always make a mess. Yeah. You can see the same program or defining a text. I'll run the program now. So let me run in a different. So you see, V appears twice, R appears one, and you can look at two appears three times. So if you look at our text, two is once, twice. Is there anything else? What is the text I use? Maybe I use a different text there. Yeah, okay, I added one more thing. Do you want to learn that? So I added extra text there. If you look at in this, my two is appearing first, second, and third. If you look at programming, this is once, this is another. And similarly, look at look at anything else. We have, let's say, Python coming two times. You have Python here. And you have one Python here. You see, we can basically run things up and do that part. OK? Now, <coughs> if you access a key which is not there, then you get an error. Like we define this. If I'm accessing it, it's basically going to give you that key error because this key does not exist. So what you want to do, you want to, if you simply access, you don't know whether it's there or not there. So first to check if this key is in owner or owner.keys. If you don't specify the method, it assumes you're looking for the key. If it is there, this will give you Boolean true. If it is not there, it is false. So what we are doing in the previous program, if you look at, we are saying, if word in count keys, we are checking, is this key exist? If this key exists, we are fine. Then we simply increment the count. If this key does not exist, then we create a entry in the dictionary, whatever word is, and set it to one. This is basically what we are doing. We check for existence if given key value in the dictionary or dictionary.keys, if you have to get true, otherwise you'll get false and take appropriate action. Other thing is to simplify our program. Look what we are doing here. 
we are first checking is the key exist is the word exist if so do this word or do this what we want to do is we'll access this key if it is not there it should give us a default value of let's say zero and if it is there it get us the value so there's a method defined called get which basically is i say dictionary name whatever name defined method get give the key value key, what is what, what the key is or label is and give a default value that means if key exists it will get me the value of the key if key does not exist it will give me the default value what I specify. Look at a previous program. Of course, this will then remove the dot. What I'm saying is current count is equal to count my dictionary name get word. If word exists, it will give me that count, whatever it is. If not, it will give me zero. And I can simply say count of word is equal to current plus one. So I don't have to put a if condition. So this whole if condition. If it is there, then do this, else do this, and easily be done by a single method called get. And when you look at this program, it will give us the same answer as we've seen before. Let me show you the same program there. So I'm saying current count get word zero, the same program. I see when you run it. So rather than doing if, I'm just saying get. If the word exists in dictionary, it will give me the key value. If not, it will give me zero. And I set the dictionary value to, if it was not there, the value zero plus one or whatever value, the value get incremented. So if I run this program, I'll get the same answer. So second program becomes easier than the first one. And that's the benefit of using the Get method. Any questions so far? <coughs> Anyone? Any questions? Abhiraj? Aruna? No, sir. No, sir. No okay. questions. Okay. So let's move on. Now, can we get the list of all keys or can you get the list of all values? So I can basically say for either I can even say count dot key in count, it will give me all the keys, or I can also say count dot key. It will give me the key, and then I can say, so let's say I want to put all the elements one at a line print key whatever value is and value of the key that's for dictionary so i'm saying for each key in my dictionary print key and count of key if i just want to put values i can say for iterating for value in count dot value so all the values that exist just give the values i can do that or if i want to get them separately there's a method called items in dictionary which basically gives you both key and value together. So I can say key and value, key comma value. Python is a beautiful language. We can use two variables as iteration there. We don't see that happening in any other language. So items gives me key and value together. I'm going to say print key and value, and that's what really happens. So let's see if I have a program for that. Yeah, so see what I'm doing here is print key value here. So let me first do that part. So the, I made this to as command key value and count dot items. So for each, it will put them separate line. I get them a separate line. So item gives you both key and values together. Okay. If I were to modify my program, same thing. Let me comment this. I'm getting only keys. 
and print key and then accessing dictionary. I need to access individually this page, so it will give me the same result. Here I can also say by default, if you don't give it, it always takes key. But other item it will specify the method. You'll again get the same answer. So both methods are all same, and that's the way we basically look at. <coughs> now, again, what you seen in the list, if I simply assign it, is only a reference gets copied and not the whole content. If I were to do something like, let's say I defined a dictionary square, one square is one, two square is four, three square is nine, four square is 16. And I define a new name called new square is equal to square. <clears throat> now both the square and the new square refer to same dictionary content in the memory square as well as new square. The two different names but accessing same dictionary storage. So that means if you assign anything to other one, it will be reflected in the previous one. So in this case, if you look at when I say new square 525, I am writing another element with key of 5, value is 25. Now for print square, it will give me 5 values and not the 4 values. So if you want to make an explicit copy, don't want to modify previous one, then you basically say square.copy. Now it will make a separate copy. You are modifying the new copy, but previous one will not be modified. If you try to square previous one, it will basically give you error. Just to give an example there. <coughs> Let's say square is equal to 1 colon 1. 2 colon 4, 3 colon 9, and sq is equal to sq. Now say sq dot 4 is equal to 16. Print and sq, you'll get the 4 value. But if I want to make sure that I want to make a separate copy, say and sq is equal to sq dot copy. Now got a separate copy. Now if I modify SQ, let's say 5 is equal to 25, SQ will give me 5 elements, where NSQ will give me still 4 elements. But as I said, dictionary, there is no restriction on whether key can be a string or key can be a value, key can even be a list, it can be any data structure, whatever you feel like. And the value can be anything. So there is no restriction on what a key can be or what a value can be. So you can use whichever way you would like to do. If I want to simply clear the dictionary method, I can just do a clear. Sometimes we make a mistake. So let me say the mistake we are talking about the <coughs> nine. nine. Uh, let me say sq is equal to 1 colon 1, 2 colon 2, sorry, 2 colon 4, 3 colon 9, 4 colon 16, and I'm done. And I say nsq dot clear, sorry, nsq is equal to sq, and if I say nsq dot clear, even SQ would be empty now. Okay. Now, what, but if you do differently, now let me go back. Let's say this. I'm doing this, but I assign NSQ is equal to empty dictionary. Rather than using clear, I have Assigned and both are basically the same. You see, there's no difference. But look here, I have created a new dictionary and assigned to NSQ. Now, in this case, NSQ points to a different dictionary in memory, whereas SQ is a previous dictionary. If you print SQ here, 
you still get the old dictionary but nsq would be so if you want to refer to same entity as x to do clear you want to assign a new location then you can create empty dictionary the two are different understand that part very clearly and when you deal with functions so let's say if you are passing a dictionary in a function and if you do clear whole content would be so let me give an example there let's say def clean and i'm passing a name now let's say sq I do an SQ and I say clean SQ and if you look at SQ it will be empty because completely cleaned up. But if I were to do differently, let's say I define now look what I'm doing. I'm assigning a different dictionary to do and this myd becomes a local variable there which is not passed back to which is the different location it is not the same as what sq has been passed till i was using it sq was the same as myd but i signed a new one it never comes back to main part so if i were to now do clean sq now you would see print i'll still get the old dictionary what happened oh what did I do? One minute. Let me do that one minute. SQ is this. I assign this. Now I should say clean SQ. I get the same, nothing gets changes there. I think I would have made a mistake. Or if you want to be clear about it, let me say I'll do this. And to make sure SQ is fine, I would say clean SQ. So this print is coming from here but this does not mean that this sq has been cleared up if we were to say print sq we'll get the same thing so there's a difference between in a function cleaning it up assigning a new one versus using a clear clear means it operates on the same dictionary item but if you assign a new empty dictionary it becomes a different local variable which never got reflected back to previous one the common mistake I see people using interchangeably and sometimes the code doesn't work. Any questions about this part? <coughs> Any question? Because this is yes, you have to try it out. Once you try it out, then you will know what it is. So with that, I'm probably done. So now I'll say do some exercises. So one is create a simple dictionary, which is Enter a role number and the name on terminal and add to dictionary element where role number is the key and name as the value. So your dictionary is role number is the key, role number and name. This is my key, this is my value. So four, five, six of classmates created dictionary and then print the student dictionary. It's a very simple stuff that you can do, keep adding it. And then print so you know the how to make a dictionary. Now this comes to the question what Abhiraj was asking. Using a name, can I find the role number? That basically means first is now we also done file IO. So create let's say role number and names, read from the file, add to the dictionary. The and file contains two entries, role number, comma, name. Using role number comma name, build a dictionary where my key is roll number and my value is 
name. Now I want to find out what is the roll number of let's say Abhiram or Abhiraj or whatever somebody. Now what you need to do is iterate over all the items and check if the name exists. So you'll basically say for key comma value. So you look like your code would something look like the following. You loop, right? Yeah. So you do it will look like the following for key comma value in let's say a student is my dictionary items i say if value is equal to let's say abhiram then i would say print Got it? Of course, I haven't defined the student, so which is fine. Yeah. But this is how you have to find roll number given the value. So this is your assignment number two, one A and one B. Are we okay? Yes, sir. Anybody else any questions on this? Second is. Oh, sir. So could you show the previous slide, the code? Which one? The code for the 1B. This one? Yes, sir. So let's say okay, I sir. do the following. I say students is equal to, let's say, rather than reading from your first, I'm assigning. One is Abhiram. Two is Abhiraz. Three is Rizna sorry. Four is let's say Anoj. I think this is good enough for time being. And I want to know what is roll number Ajun the hundred entry. What is roll number for Srizna? So I would say for key value in student items. A value is Rizna print roll number of oh I didn't student sorry so my mistake there be careful common mistake that you make got it Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody has a doubt on the assignment question? Yes, sir. Okay, next one. Build a dictionary of dictionaries. I said anything key could be anything. So dictionary itself should be another key. So what I need to do is, let's say you are in class 12th or 11th or whatever. So for the last three classes, for each class, make a dictionary subject and the mark. And marks would be internal and external, which could be a list. So essentially, let's say I'll define, if we look at, I'm defining class 11, the dictionary, whose key is maths, and marks are 20 in internal, 79 in external. So the list becomes value of the key math. Value of the key physics, is 18 comma 78 value of the key chemistry become 19 comma 76 value of the key english is 20 comma 75 value of key who oh, i got it again math physics or oh, computer science. i cannot have same computer thing science. so this yeah. would be at least cs or whatever something else i cannot have same thing there my mistake okay so let the moment let's assume this is s or whatever Want to do that? This and now class 12 is something. Now I'm defining class number as another marks. Class number is a key, 11 class, and class 11 as a value. That means for the class 11, 
this class 11 itself is the value which itself is a dictionary from defining dictionary of dictionary so for class 11 values class 11 which itself is a dictionary whose values are so and so similarly for class number 12 your values is a dictionary which is called class 12 who's like this so build a dictionary of dictionary and now you can do this for entire classes one two three onwards but now question is you ask what is your marks of physics in class 3 you should be able to access that and give the result that means if you need to access so let's say you want to get marks of physics of class 6 or 7 or whatever then you do double access or access would be something like let's say <coughs> for key value in range so it should say marks Let's say 12. This gives you the dictionary. So this itself is a dictionary. And this elements you want to access M. So you say M. This will give you the marks of mathematics of class 11. And you want to get marks of internals. You further index it with a value 0. If you want to get external, you access with. So you can make a dictionary of dictionary, list, dictionary of list of dictionary, or whichever way, whatever way you want to deal with, you can continue so, guessing. There is no limit on how you uh, can assign the dictionary. Sir, yeah. shouldn't everything be in the same bracket, or will it make any difference if it is not? Meaning, repeat again. Uh, 12 comma m comma 0 in the same uh, square bracket, no, no, right? No, no, no. Have... M comma 0 is a different item. So you have to look at the whole thing as a dictionary by itself. And then accessing that element of dictionary. Okay. It is different from what is called two dimensional array, three dimensional array. There's nothing called a two dimensional array, Python are the list. Okay. When you go to a yes, numpy in something, then you have those two dimensional array. But in basic Python, there's nothing called two dimensional array. You implement it as a list of lists. Does that yes, answer your question? Yeah. Any other question? No, sir. Okay. So, other is now that I got to know that schools are all the schools are starting online classes. And Alan also started doing online coaching. So, some of you may be going to coaching and all that. So, I don't know whether you want to have classes every day now. So my suggestion is, and you have a coaching classes happening in the evening, at least for Abhiram, 4 to 7, 7 30, rather, maybe something else. So how do you want to continue? Do we continue? I have about five, six more lectures, or maybe seven more lectures. Should we continue? Should we stop it now? Any suggestion? So except Thursdays and Sundays, I can be there. Fine. This I mean. is Anuj or Abhira? Abhiraj. Uh, uh, Abhiraj. Okay. Anybody else? So I am fine. I... Hmm? Go ahead, it's okay. No, Sujana, please. So, Abhiraj, you can Hello. be on Thursday and Sunday or not on Thursday and Sunday? No, I cannot be on Thursdays and Sundays. So, let's see, Abhiraj, Thursday and Sunday is out. Okay. Other days you are fine. Anybody else? Any other day which you can't? I am not free on Tuesday and Thursday. Sujana. Tuesday and Thursday. <coughs> I think Abhiram, you are not free on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Oh. Anybody else? Yeah, so not for Tuesday. Even Abhiram. Is not free on. Maybe I can suggest Monday and Wednesday. Yes, sir. Or do you want to do okay. three days in a week? That is Maybe fine. too much. We get to do homework and all that. Mondays and Wednesdays is fine. Which is fine, eh? So we're yes, next sir. class on Wednesday and then do Monday and Wednesday. And if you want to, we can right. do fly on the line. So I'll make changes to the schedule. 
they will do Monday and Wednesday as of now. Monday, today is Monday. Yes, so next class would be on coming Wednesday. Okay. Right. Any questions? I'm, I'm sure you are doing the exercises. Or no? Please do that. But unless you do that, you will not be able to follow. Yes, sir. So, so when will be next class? Wednesday. Wednesday. Day after tomorrow. Oh. Thank you, sir. Okay. We'll do that. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.